Hello everyone and thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean the Vaping Biker and today we're going to be looking at a little RDA from Digiflavor. Now obviously Digiflavor came out with the Pharaoh not so long ago and there's one similarity between this and that. Um, but it's a funky little flavour and this came to me from the Nobacanists in the UK um, and they gave it to me while I was at Expo so I've had plenty of time to have a play with it and have a good old sort of feel around and see how it works and, uh, and how effective it is so before any further ado uh, let's go down and we'll have a little look up close at this little rda come on then right so here we are with the packaging for the digi flavor lynx rda uh, nothing overly exciting on the packaging there to be worrying about there is a bunch of information there i'm on manual focus again today just for shits and giggles so we'll see how we get on with that one shall we hopefully you can read that and everyone's a winner that's just telling you exactly what the features and all that sort of stuff are with a scratch and sniff down the bottom there now if we take that out look there's an arrow it tells you which way to slide the box just in case you didn't know now then here we go with the rda itself we'll come back to that in a second and let's have a look at the other goodies that you get in the box here so you do get a screwdriver a bunch of o-rings and a couple of post screws as well but there's no springs which is a bit annoying and i'll tell you why that is in a moment uh just moving that to one side where hopefully it's not going to make a mess now then uh let's have a little look see here we can brighten things up a little bit so we can see exactly what we're doing so this is the rda itself and it does look nice in its simplicity there's no logos there's no branding no etching no engraving nothing like that going on it's just looking nice and simple which is absolutely splendid you do have a digi flavor logo up the top there um which reads that way around um, and you do have a little bit on the bottom right there now then I'm going to move this uh, focus up a little bit now so hopefully we can see that's the wrong way Dean that's the wrong way I want you to be able to see things nice and clearly today if we can so that's the uh, that's what we've got on the bottom there obviously we've got the uh, the post screws and what have you going on there now then the way this works is the airflow is twofold when I saw this originally in the first vlog where I got it and I unpacked it um, I thought it was only a single bottom airflow but it is actually side as well although it's ugly as sin now then listen here not at the car going past We've got a little bit of a squeaky thing going on there and I'm not entirely sure if that's the threads or the o-rings but it is something anyway if we see here there's a sort of a, an, a hole going on there it's a hole appearing so um, what we've got is air starting to go in now this air that goes in here will go down and I'll show you where that goes once it goes down in a little while however if you keep going and we're really opening it up now you also have the air on the side here now at that point i think that looks it's changed from having an attractive looking rda to something that looks fuck ugly in my opinion but there we go that is just my opinion uh, but you do have side airflow if you so want it oh and scratchy scratchy squeaky squeaky so we can take that off and this is this is kind of everything that you've got to play with air wise like i say this air does go down and let's have a little look and see what happens when that goes down we've got a little channel going on here so whoops a daisy so we've got the uh, the air that comes down going down that there that gets accepted by this channel going on here goes into that air hole at the bottom there and then out through that little one right there now that's not a particularly large hole i've got to admit that is a reading through at whoop not that big three and three quarters ish I've just thrown something on myself and I imagine it's probably quite important but I have no idea what it is anyway um, yeah so the air can go down there and then straight up into there so obviously if you're going to want complete unrestricted hits you are going to be wanting to take advantage of this side airflow as well which is like I say is just not a very attractive thing in my opinion but uh, but you know it's there if you want it so that's nice um, screw that back on there just so we got we know what we're looking at once again so yeah i mean once again <laughs> excuse me so yes that's it i think i had this top cap, top cap on sideways that gave it sort of a look like there was two but there's actually only the one and you can see the post going on in the middle there 
Um, but yes, one of the other good things that we have got, oh, that squeak, I tell you. One of the other good things that we have got in here, you'll see that under there, you've got a little kind of a nubbin poking down on the side. You've got one on the other side as well. That's because they go into these little side slots here to make sure everything is lined up. So it makes sure that these um, air holes are directly down. Obviously, um, that's where you want them because you want that to uh, to feed in as much as you can. So all in all, nothing overly remarkable there. You do have a nice deep juice well, which is good. Um, give a little measurement on there. I thought it'd be deeper than that. That's coming through at 5.62. Once again, let's uh, let's imagine that my verniers are a little bit on the crap side. So I would say that's probably a little bit more than 5.62, but you've got a reasonable amount there. Now, it would have been nice to see these air holes come up a little bit higher than the side here, just uh, to, to stop any kind of over-dripping leakage, but, um, but we haven't, so there we go. However, the party piece that we've got for this, which very much like the Pharaoh, makes me a very, very happy boy as well, is, stop actually looking through the camera, Dean, try and figure out what you do. When you unscrew, you've got sprung posts, which makes, see this, I didn't get the Pharaoh, but um, I knew that that was going to be a good idea, and oh my word, it is. It makes life so much easier for building, it really, really does. You've got these kind of little um, sort of bookends going on here at the end of each post as well, so your, 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 your block can't, uh, can't spin round, which I think is a really clever idea. It's very, very good. Uh, to be honest, I am just super happy with this because I'm not a fan of clamps, to be honest with you. I think they're generally a pain in the ass to build on, uh, but this does make it much, much easier. So um, just to give you an indication of how I go about these things and dropping things all over the place, let's, uh, let's just move that focus down to the table for a second so we can see what we've got going on. Okay, so we've popped the... Uh, Pop the posts open like so. You then have your coils. These, let me just show you what these look like. These are just, these These came through from Coilmaster and they don't actually look too bad. They're uh, dual core twisted Claptons and they, uh, they uh, yeah, interesting. Anyway, <laughs> let's get to the task at point, shall we, before I go completely off topic. Right, so. Essentially the way I do it is you try and get uh, one leg at one side of the screw, same side on the other post, and then that means that your leg on the other side will go on the outside rather than on the inside. Uh, that just helps to make sure that when this does clamp down, it clamps down evenly. Now what I have done here as well is I have bent the uh, bottom leg there so that both legs are coming out along the same plane, which uh, just makes life a little bit easier. However, what I would suggest when you're doing this, let me just get myself one of these little ceramic jigs just because they're easy to use. Okay, what I would suggest doing is getting it in place like so. Getting it roughly in place to roughly where you're gonna want it and then just cut off those legs. We're not gonna need them. Okay, so that's those two off. Don't know why I'm turning that round, it's pointless. Right, here we go. And go on, here you go. There we go. That's those two coming off there. Come out. Like so, and like so. That means we've got pretty reasonable leg length on the coil, which is what we want. So uh, what I can do now is I can pop these back in. That one can go in that side quite happily. Oops. What I'll do is get that one. In you go, you bugger. In that one quite happily. Give them a bit of a squeeze up. And then you tighten down the clamps. Like 
like so now we are horribly twisted around but then you get to muck about with your coils get them in the right spot get them where you need them to be and uh, everyone's doing it what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to use a uh, one of the coil master wrap uh, or coil kit joeys where's the three that's the three right so then we've finally got some coils in there they're not pretty they are coil master jobs and they were an absolute sod to uh, to get sorted out wonderful got the little thing they came in just to show you what they were um to be honest with you oh i've just thrown it on the floor oh i've just thrown it on the floor and these are the ones that i got sent to me from coil master these are supposed to be 28 gauge uh, dual core with 32 gauge on the outside i'm assuming it's all canthal because we we'll have those two coils there that are just will not press together but seem to be firing kind of okay um we are looking at 0 0.4 so I imagine that is all Canthel and also also taking a good old time to uh, to sort itself out. <coughs> Excuse me. Now then, let's get some wick in here and get vaping this bastard before I lose interest, shall we? Let's do that. Because <laughs> we're looking at Canthel in the coils there, I'm going to be using the VCC stuff just because I think it works out really well for uh, for high temperature stuff. Although it is just a little bit more of a sod to uh, to get in place. Well, that took all a lot longer than expected. I was just fiddling around with my hands and it was all going kind of wrong. Now then, let's get some juice on here. We're going to use some fruit custard banana. This is from Vaptasia, fruit and custard. Um, Let's have uh, get a fair old whack of this on here. You can drip quite happily down the middle there because obviously there's not really any great restriction going on um, and the air holes are well out of the way for that which is nice. Uh, but please remember that when you do put your cotton in to leave space both underneath the coil and either side of the uh, of the air hole there just to make sure that it uh, it doesn't drain or doesn't go down the uh, doesn't go down the old air hole when you're uh, when you're juicing up. Now then, I'm starting to get there now, and we're happening. So let's finally go up top and vape on it. So that was the up close with this little RDA. Now, um, those coil master coils were absolutely horrible to put in and I won't be using those bad boys again. However, they're not vaping too badly, although we've got a little bit of movement in one of them, which is a bit annoying. So let's get this up a little bit. Up we come. There we go. And uh, I'm vaping these at... Whoop, 88.8 uh, .8 watts because they're all canthal and they take forever to heat up now one of the good things about this rda is the fact that because of that the way that side airflow works it means that it does um give you a pretty much a leak free experience which i think is really good so you can over drip and while i said that it would have been nice if those sort of side airflow holes were a little bit high it doesn't really make that much difference unless you put too much juice in it and then lay it on its side for it to dribble up that kind of outer casing and then out of the air hole so to speak um, but otherwise it's not too bad now if I close it up so we've just got this sort of down below airflow going it's still a restricted lung here and it's not bad I think that personally helps with the flavour because you're getting the air underneath the coils and that's pushing it up to your mouth. So uh, that's how I uh, quite enjoy using it. Plus, I think it looks less stupid when it's uh, when it's in that kind of <laughs> configuration. However, if we do want to undo it more and open up these side airflows, these big monsters, obviously there is a lot less restriction and it is good to go. So, hello, 
I, uh, so for clouds and things, uh, yes, it's pretty good. If you do want that airflow for clouds, then that's all fine and dandy. If you do also want to close that down, it reminds me a little bit of the velocity with that kind of unscrewing and screwing um, situation going on there. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think you do get... I think you possibly when you unscrew it or screw it down rather so you're trying to get just the bottom airflow I think some air does go up and into the side uh, but I'm not entirely sure the reason I say that is because obviously the threads that may stop it would be right at the top and so screwing it down there you are getting a little bit of air go up and in and along the side there as well so you're losing a little bit of that air pressure so it's not all just coming out of those what did I say three mil holes um, at the bottom there so that's quite nice. I mean, I think the flavour on it is pretty darn good when it comes to uh, when you're using it with the main airflow, not shut off, but kind of so you can't see it if you like. Um, and I think it's not a not a bad little performer. Um, now, as always, I've not looked to see how much they are. I've not looked at all. So let's have a little look together and see where we're going. By the way, cheers. Happy Christmas. People, the Christmas adverts, John Lewis advert is out already. What's that all about? Anyway, the Nobacconists. The Nobacconists. Great little shop down in Southampton. I went down to uh, to see them for the opening of their new premises a while ago, and it was really quite good. Um, one of the things that I've not mentioned is you do get a 510 adapter in the uh, in the in the kit so you can put your own drip tips in there if you want i mean the one that comes with it isn't particularly large it's not what i would call a chuff style cap so uh, so it does give you a uh, a reasonable draw I, I haven't found any requirement to put my own drip tips in there to be honest with you uh, it would be nice because of the airflow to be able to have had the option of having a sort of a, a wider bore chuff cap excuse me um, but I imagine you may be able to get well yeah I was, I was gonna say you may be able to get a sort of a friction fit kind of custom cap in there as well if you wanted but you do have a shelf is that going to focus no not really you do have a shelf the dog scratching you do have a shelf down there sort of in there so it does kind of give a, a stop for the uh, drip tip so it can't go down too far but it does also mean that you have got a slightly restricted airflow which is a bit of a shame um i would like to have seen that a little bit wider or the option of it but uh it doesn't really sort of detract from its performance and i think if anything it does help give a little bit better flavor now the nobacconists are selling it for 31.99 it comes in it comes in two colors it comes in the stainless or in the in a black um they haven't got the black on here at the moment so i don't know if that's something they've got coming in uh oh they've got 10 units of the of the stainless ones in stock at the moment according to their website so if you are interested go and crack on 31.99 31.99 for this which i don't think is a bad price it's not i mean to get that kind of to get the clamps if you're a clamp person then um to get them sprung loaded i think just makes life way easier personally i still think the clamps have a slight issue when it comes to having um sort of equal pressure on both legs if you've got two coils going in there um but for that the only the only sort of change i would make to this is maybe have a flathead um, screw going in there so you, you're less likely to strip them out now I've not stripped these yet but uh, Philip, uh, Phillips heads long term I tend not to have a great deal of luck with so uh, yeah that's about it ladies and gentlemen all in all this is the uh, the Lynx RDA from Digiflavor as I said the Nobacconist sent it forward across or gave it to me at the show and it's not a bad little atomizer at all to be honest with you and until, unless you open up those side holes I think it looks pretty damn sweet but I mean that just that that doesn't look pretty does it does it when you have it that far apart but it may just be me being a little bit arsy I don't know nah. but it does perform it does give you a half decent flavor well pretty decent flavor actually um, 
Obviously, you've got no single coil option, so you can't really do anything about that. There's no way of blocking anything off, so you have got dual coil or go home. Thank you very much for playing. Um, but for me personally, I don't often go single coil unless it's a real flavour chaser. So um, for this, you have got a fair old best of both worlds. Anyway, thank you very much for back in this for giving this to me. And um, yeah, the only oh, there are a couple of marks on the outside. There are a couple of marks on the outside. I've just noticed that. I don't know if this is going to, uh, if you're going to be able to see them. And I don't think it's me being a behemoth with it. I'm not entirely sure. No, you're not going to be able to see them. I'm just sure. But it's just that's being super picky because that could have been me, to be honest with you. But uh, but yeah, all in all, not a bad, very affordable RDA. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Have it large. <laughs>